Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa is gearing up for a major announcement on the intensifying load shedding crisis. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the background to this development. Hi Terence. Hi Fennell. Stage 6 load shedding seems to have spurred a lot of behind the scenes activity. Yes, we know for a fact that uh, this previous weekend there was a lot of activity between Eskom and various ministers and different agencies in government to look at this uh, load shedding crisis and what sort of announcements and interventions could be made to try and arrest it. And uh, we, we then had on Monday the president announced through his newsletter that he would be in the coming days uh, announcing a plan. And then there's been a, a series of announcements by the National Planning Commission, by Business uh, Unity South Africa since then, sh uh, showing that there's, there has been consultation or there is consultation underway. And now we're getting to the point where I think the rubber is going to hit the road. There's going to be a, an announcement and we're going to get some sort of visibility of a pathway out of this very intense phase. Now, I mean, stage six load shedding, we, we had only had once before and only for a couple of days. And we've had it now very intensively from uh, sort of late June as the strike uh, intensified across Eskom, a wildcat strike. We went from sort of stage two load shedding all the way up to stage six. And we stayed in that stage four to stage six sort of level, which is cutting 4,000 megawatts to 6,000 megawatts to keep the system in balance. Without doing that, there was a risk of a, a national blackout. But that's very intense and it was affecting people, at least uh, households and businesses, at least six hours a day. And uh, it takes, uh, a, it's sort of knocking people's morale. It's definitely knocking investor confidence and business is warning it's going to inf affect, you know, our economic uh, indices as well as potentially our rating. So it's very serious and uh, we need some sort of leadership on this. What is the president likely to announce and when? Well, I think there's been a convergence over the last couple of weeks around the sort of interventions that are realistic over the next two years. So if we're looking at a two-year horizon, there are not many. A lot of these things are long-life assets. They take many years to build. And if we had been building them at a sort of a steady business-as-usual pace from 2011 when we started the renewables RPP program, but starting with renewables, and if we'd had a steady pace of procurement, we probably wouldn't be in this sort of condition. But we had that seven year gap from 2014 to 2022 where we just didn't procure any uh, new electricity generation. And at the same time, these under uh, maintained, neglected coal fired power stations have sort of not been uh, performing. They've become highly unstable. The energy availability factor from Eskom's coal fleet is, is dismal, it's below 60%. In the old days, uh, going back to sort of um, and 90s that, do, that used to run at a 90% availability factor. So you can see it's a massive decline. So I think that there's a convergence that we need to find a way to give Eskom this time and space, some headroom to fix these coal plants. And the only way to really do that is to inject energy into the system. There's a, there's a lack of energy, mostly into the system. So that would really come from things that can be built within that 18 to 24 month period. That's really wind and solar really. And then we also have to have some uh, complement uh, flexibility or capacity that we can add at the same time. So sort of battery storage being the highest profile one that you can probably do within that 24 months period. So there seems to be a convergence around wind, uh, solar or renew variable renewable supported by storage. So we've had the, the planning commission talk about 10 gigawatts of wind and solar and uh, five gigawatts of storage. We see business unity talking, uh, South Africa talking about 15 gigawatts of, uh, of new electricity generation and uh, four gigawatts of storage, so uh, even a larger scale. And we know that Eskom has been saying for many years that we need sort of 6,000 megawatts of, of new generation capacity in the system so that they've got space uh, to, to deal with these coal units that are basically decommissioning themselves and I think have, do a proper assessment of which ones are salvageable and which ones we're going to then sort of be, participate in maybe an early decommissioning program which would be aligned with our nationally determined goals, our, our decarbonisation goals which we put out into the public domain and we made a pledge around uh, in 2021 before COP26. So I think there's sort of a convergence 
So it's important to, to give Eskom time and space to get this coal plant working again, probably at a, at a smaller scale, because I think some units are just beyond repair. Uh, and then adding, and on, the only way you can do this is to add electricity uh, energy, variable renewable energy in the system uh, uh, in, in this time frame is solar and wind, and that would come from some of the procurement programs, the centralized procurement programs which have been delayed and also massively from the private sector, as well as Eskom finishing its build program. You know, we need to have the Kusila units finalized. At the same time, in parallel, getting ready for the future. And these are future-ready uh, technologies. Generally, we're going to need more wind and solar because of our decarbonisation commitments, and we're going to need storage. But there'll be other uh, procurements that can take place with some breathing space. And I think that's really what it's about, creating some breathing space and then lowering the daily risk of load shedding, which is so high at the moment. Will this be enough to finally bring an end to load shedding? I think at the scale that the National Planning Commission, Meridian Economics, uh, Boos is talking about, it would be enough. The issue is, can you do it? You know, over the period between 2011 and, and today, we've added a total of just over 6,000, six gigs of wind and solar. So now we're talking about in the two year period, adding 10 gigs. So it's a massive uh, logistical exercise. It's, it's, it's going to require implementation like we've never seen before, single-minded focus, getting all the red tape out of the way that we can, getting multiple players, not relying on Eskom alone, but um, RPPs, households, businesses, all playing their part in, in getting this uh, new capacity and energy onto the system, uh, and uh, also making sure that it's future ready so that we don't make a sort of risky investments that can't sort of sustain once we come out of the crisis, if we can. So yes, it's possible, it's, but it's going to require a massive and unprecedented building effort that we've never seen in South Africa before. And, uh, and that's why there's going to be a lot of questions whether it really is feasible. So I think having this two year sort of time frame is very important. But whether load shedding and whether we can get our act together uh, is going to be out of the system in two years, I have my doubts. I think this is more baked in for a longer period and there is going to be load shedding. But hopefully as you do these actions, it will be at a less intense level. This stage four to stage six is untenable for business, for the economy, uh, for future investment. And it's really draining on, on citizens. We have to get out of this sort of very high intensive phase and every new electron you add to the grid and then the capacity to back it up through storage is going to help but obviously it's going to take time there's no single switch there's no silver bullet we got ourselves into the situation by not building at a pace and scale that the system needed and this is the situation this is the reality and we're going to now have to sort of bite the bullet and do what is necessary and get the red tape out of the way get all the the regulatory and legislative burden uh, impediments to new capacity out of the way for a time-defined period. So having a, a clear targets, clear deadlines, very important. Whether it will mean we're out of load shedding in two years, I doubt it. Thank you. That's the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.